The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to the webinar, Cybersecurity Risk, How to Assess and Manage Your Cybersecurity Threats. My name is Anupam Sahai. I'm co-founder and president of AG5, and we specialize in security risk and compliance management software solutions, which is delivered through the cloud. I have 25-plus uh, years' experience in the industry in areas related to healthcare IT, security compliance, cloud computing, and networking. And uh, I have uh, technical papers and, and patents that, uh, that I've developed over the years. So let's talk about the, the topics that we will cover today. Uh, we will start with talking about the breaches uh, that happened in 2014 and what the lessons learned from them were and how does the how does it look in 2015 in terms of cybersecurity threats we will then talk about what are the drivers for security that uh, we need to worry about in, in this year and beyond and and then we'll jump into the topics of uh, cybersecurity, what does it mean to assess risk, and uh, what are the lessons learned and best practices that, uh, that uh, organizations need to worry about. And then uh, we will also talk briefly about AG5, the tool that's used for uh, cyber, that's been developed to deal with cybersecurity risk and compliance management. And at the end, we will have Q&A. So during the session, if you have any any questions about the about the topic that you're hearing? Please type the, type them into the into the question pane of GoToWebinar, and we will take that up at the end of the session. We will also send out uh, a webinar recording for the session within the next uh, two business days. And if you need a copy of the slides, please uh, let us know. So let's get started. So first, before um, I get started, I want to show you an a infographic, and this is a site that I like a lot. It shows you the biggest data breaches that have happened, and it's updated on a regular basis. And uh, the size of the bubble indicates the, the number of records that have been breached. So bigger the bubble, bigger the number of records that have been breached. And as you can see here, that there are a lot of breaches happening with, uh, with quite regular frequency. And the latest breach that happened um, uh, actually a few days ago was Primera. This, this uh, affected about 11 million uh, records. Uh, Anthem Blue Cross, which was about 80 million records, um, happened uh, um, a few weeks ago. And, and so J.P. Morgan Chase, eBay, you can see here that um, the picture depicts uh, huge breaches that have happened in 2014, and, and the trend continues in 2015. Uh, you have a number of big bubbles that have already taken place, and we are just uh, a couple of months uh, into 2015. So, so, the <clears throat> so the statistics is pretty staggering. If, if you look at the market research out there and the information that's reported, there are 30 to 60 million identities stolen every month. And there are at least 15 to 30 incidents happening every month. And, and this rate of breaches is, has been growing at the rate of 100% year over year, starting 2012. So it doubled in 2013 from 2012. Uh, in 2014, it continued that rate, and we hope that 2015 is not um, as terrible, but all indicators are that it will be even more, uh, a much more difficult year for, from a cybersecurity perspective. So moving forward, what do we expect in 2015? So one of the things that has come up in, um, in, in studying all the breaches that took place in 2014 is that uh, Pretty much every vertical is under attack from a business perspective, but healthcare businesses constitute about 40% of major attacks. 
and the target there is really uh, stealing of personal health information. But if you look at finance, retail, uh, educational, all of these verticals are under attack in a, in a continuous fashion. And a lot of the nature, the nature of the attacks, as you'll see as we go forward, has been changing. So earlier it used to be some group of organized hackers that were out to have some fun or, or make some money. They would break in and steal card, uh, steal credit card information or personal information, and and uh, they will sell it in the underground market. Yes, yeah, so there is an underground market of all this uh, information, identity information, Amazon, sorry, the credit card information and personal information. So there is like an Amazon marketplace where you can steal the information and sell it for a price. And credit card rates go anywhere between seventy to hundred dollars per credit card. Personal information is slightly higher; it's um, hundred fifty to two hundred dollars. So, so there is a rate attached to all this information that is stolen, and and so there are these groups used to do that. But now, the attack nature, nature of the attack has been changing, and it's become more more driven by espionage and ransom, and, and sometimes sponsored by corporates or nations. And and so this is uh, this is a terrible development because um, now the organizers are much more resourceful. Uh, they have motives that um, that are clearly laid out for them, and and so it becomes a little harder to uh, detect and protect organizations around such attacks. And and then some of the traditional attack patterns, such as um, Windows platform has been under attack, but as we move to a mobile platform, that attack pattern will change and, and morph into including uh, some of the non-Windows mobile platforms, um, the, some of the open source mobile payment systems, etc. will continue to be attacked. So cybersecurity we expect uh, to continue to grab head, headlines in 2015 and uh, we had shell shock, we had heart bleed, etc., etc. These vulnerabilities were discovered in 2014 that trend will continue to happen and unfortunately we we as as a community need to find a way to to be prepared and and deal with uh, such an eventuality and and that's really the topic of the webinar today that we'll talk about so i was talking about the motivation what what is the motivation for these beaches and as you can see this is a a trending graph which shows uh, how things have changed over the years, and this goes till 2013, because the 2014 data is yet to come out. But it tells you clearly that um, you know earlier it was financial, financial motive driven. Now it's espionage driven. It's growing, and these will cross over pretty soon in 2015, 2016 timeframe. And um, and the number of breaches that are happening um, might still be larger for financial driven motives, but uh, it's, it's going to change very rapidly. And um, if you look at uh, the attacker, uh, if you want to understand who the attacker is, uh, clearly, overwhelmingly, it's the external attacker that, um, that is taking charge and is driving most of these uh, breaches that are happening. And, and that will continue. So the message that I want you to take away is that Security breaches are rampant, and and this is uh, and research has shown that it it is caused by a number of different um, uh, types of attack. In fact, there are nine different types of attack patterns that have been identified and studied. But some of the most um, common ones are, you know, using hacking, malware. Um, there's some insider privilege misuse, and and vulnerabilities that are exploited. And uh, we talked about the motives. We talked about uh, uh, some of the reasons for the for the attacks being uh, due to external parties. But this is pretty alarming that it takes roughly uh, months for or more to discover that a breach has happened. So while the attackers, the cyber attackers, whether it's insiders or external hackers, they might break in, steal the data in a matter of minutes and seconds. It takes months for businesses to discover that they've been breached. So that's a huge problem. So there is not only a need to protect your um, 
your assets, critical assets, but also to detect and make sure that you're able to recover from, from these breaches that are happening. And, and the irony is that 97% of the breaches were avoidable using very simple uh, controls that businesses could have taken to a, understand and detect these threats and to uh, prevent such threats from happening. And, and this is actually borne out, borne out by the recent by a recent report that came out a couple of weeks ago from HP, where they looked at all the 2014 attack patterns, and uh, most of these attack patterns were very well known a priori. These were using and exploiting vulnerabilities that were known to businesses. So, if businesses, the good news here is that if businesses are are ready to accept this as a problem, take it up as a challenge, then these problems are solvable. For the, for the most part. So now let's, uh, having defined the problem and that this is a huge problem, let's jump into what does it mean to, to secure or to protect the organization against such, such attacks? And, and what security mechanisms do we need to put in place to deal with such uh, cyber attacks? So it, it's a big security question. What does security mean? What is that your, and what security means really are three things. First is, what are your critical assets as an organization? And, and the critical assets are key to understanding what's important to you as a company. So it could be intellectual property, it could be certain data that's lying around. So the key question is, what are the critical assets? And what are the threats that can compromise those assets? And, and the, the key issue to discuss here is how are these threats going to be affecting your, your critical assets? And then another related question is, are you able to detect these threats and these attacks and, and make sure that the data is not compromised or stolen before you do that. So security allows you to ask these questions and put together safety mechanisms, security mechanisms to, to answer these questions in a, in a very positive manner. And um, a related question is, given the critical assets, given the, the threats that that might be affecting these critical assets. If those assets are compromised, what will be the impact to the organization? Because if the asset is critical, if you have uh, intellectual property, that's, that's a huge impact. And if that gets stolen, then that's a huge problem. And the, related to impact is the question of likelihood. How likely is it that this might happen? Sure, um, you know, the likelihood could be if you have a threat of being in an earthquake-prone zone. So the earthquake-prone zone says that if you're a business in California, you might be hit with a big um, earthquake in, in the next 30 years with, with some probability, and this probability went up in the last few weeks. So likelihood could be the threat, in this case the earthquake, is going to impact the business, and if that happens, then you want to make sure you plan around it to make sure that you have data being um, stored in a, outside California, for example, et cetera, et cetera. So, so the likelihood and impact of these critical assets being affected by, by threats is, is an important question. And so if you have assets that are in, somewhere around here where they are high impact but and highly likely to be compromised, those are the ones that you need to worry about the most. And if you have very high impactful assets but low likelihood, even those are worrisome because you don't want to make, you want to make sure that your intellectual property doesn't get stolen because if it gets stolen, no matter how low a likelihood, that's a huge problem. So let's talk about security uh, and, and peel the onion a little bit. Given those questions that we asked, the question becomes, what do we need to do? And, and one of the key assumptions here is that no matter how, how much security solutions you put in place, you have to assume 
that the, there is nothing called a perfect security solution. It's a myth. No matter how, how much secure, uh, how much firewalls, gateways, intrusion detection systems you put in place, just having a few security devices will not result in, in, a, in a complete solution. And, and so how do we address this security issue? So let's take the example of a house, right? So if you look at how we protect houses, there are essentially different mechanisms uh, for doing different things. So, you know, we have locks and windows that are preventing and, and um, retarding intruders from getting in. Then we have a surveillance system that detects people who might have broken through the uh, locks and windows and, and gotten in. And so the surveillance mechanism is detecting motion, is detecting an, any intruder. And then even if that is, um, that is breached, if there's an intruder inside the, inside the home, then there is, it's, it's very important that there needs to be some kind of a timed response to this uh, whole intrusion. And this could be in the form of um, the, amp the police being called. There could be some dogs that uh, take charge, or it could be a gun. Uh, in remote areas. So, so security here for, for our home really involves a combination of protect, detect, and response. And, and um, the reason why this is important is that no matter how many protect mechanisms that you put in place, they will get breached. So it's important that you don't, don't rely on just protection mechanisms. Today, there's a lot of focus on protection mechanisms, but that's not going to cut it. There needs to be a detection mechanism in place as well, which, um, which deals with surveillance so that if the intruders do get in, you are able to detect their presence and then respond to that in a timely fashion. So all of these go hand in hand and any security, mature security framework needs to include these three aspects of, <coughs> excuse me, protect, detect and respond. Now, what, what let's expand this uh, scenario when we have the internet where every business is connected to each other. And, and so the problem is not just localized anymore in the case of a house. Here, anybody from the internet across the world can break in. And, and because they're connected by the internet, they can leverage um, the internet to break in and compromise the assets. And your assets are no longer physical assets, but also digital assets. So to protect digital assets, there needs to be a set of mechanisms around protect, detect, and respond that complement and do the same that is done for the physical asset. And to govern all of this, to make sure that the leadership in the business, leadership in the company is, is indeed in sync with the requirements, there needs to be governance policies and, and governance done to ensure that the technical and physical safeguards are indeed in place. So what I want you to think about is that in the connected world with the Internet, there are physical assets, there are uh, digital assets that need to be protected. To protect physical assets, you need a physical safe, set of physical safeguards. For pr uh, protecting uh, digital assets, you need some technical safe, uh, safeguards. And to make sure that this is all making sense, holding together in a framework, there needs to be a sort of governance slash administrative administrative safeguards. And all of these need to take into account protect, detect, and respond, the three phases required for a mature security framework. So having that uh, background, let's jump into peeling the onion a little bit more around what does it mean to, 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 to be secure, to protect your critical assets, and to do risk management, which is really the end goal of what, what we're trying to achieve, or it's a means to, to the end goal of protecting the organization that we're trying to achieve. So what are critical assets? Critical assets could be people, process, and data. It could be either of those. It could be intellectual property. It could be digital assets. It could be confidential data. It could also be operational con continuity. If, if you have a web service that, that's, um, that's an e-commerce e store, you want to make sure it's up and running, that it doesn't come down to its knees because of attacks. So operational continuity is very important. And at the end of the day, you're trying to protect the brand. If you have 
a brand um, that gets uh, breached, like Target or Sony, it takes weeks and months and, and uh, for the brand to recover because people don't start, will stop trusting you with their personal information. And if that happens, then you're in big trouble. You have to win back the confidence. So the brand damage is, at the end of the day, the biggest, um, biggest um, problem that uh, businesses are trying to protect. And, and then I talked about the value of the asset is, is, is important to assign. And, and the value is really tied with um, the likelihood and the impact connection, right? Because if the critical asset is valuable, then the question becomes how likely is it that this attack, this critical asset will be breached and uh, what will be the impact if it does happen? So let's talk about risk. And this is a, a, an eye chart. I want to warn you about this. And this is really talking about risk from a technical sense. And I won't go into this uh, in, in, in detail. But suffice it to say that what, we are, what risk really is, is you're trying to understand the critical assets in the organization and what threats can compromise it from an from a attack perspective. And um, what will be the impact of such a, such a threat uh, affecting the critical assets. So risk assessment is really the process of identifying, estimating, and prioritizing your information security risk. And the information security risk could be because of physical uh, assets being compromised or digital assets being compromised. So the question comes, why do we worry about it? Why do we need to worry about it? So it really goes back to what you were talking about earlier. There are attackers out there who are willing to and break in and, and will breach, breach and steal information. So it's important that as an organization, you have a complete view, overview of where do you stand today as an organization? What's the map? What are the security gaps? What are the threats, vulnerabilities, likelihood and impact of these um, attacks from compromising your critical assets? And that's really the risk exposure. So risk exposure is trying to quantify your vulnerability to these attacks that are happening. And, um, and, and there's some severe consequences. Um, so the average cost of a breach, this is um, uh, data from a market research firm, is about $5.5 .5 million. This is an average cost. So it could be lower, and most likely it's going to be much higher. Uh, to give you a sense of the proportion Roughly the cost of a data breach per record is about $165. Um, and so for um, Anthem Blue Cross, where 80 million records were breached, you can add the numbers up, and it's a huge number. Similarly, Primera, uh, Primera uh, uh, Medical that got breached a couple of days ago, uh, there were 11 million records involved. So the numbers add up. These are You're talking about hundreds of millions or billions of dollars of of um, <coughs> cost that these organizations face as a result of these breaches. So again, there are smaller breaches, there are larger breaches. And if you look at the trend, the, the size of the breaches have been going up. And especially with larger organizations that have huge personal information, this is a, a big problem. And this is also required by any security program. And, and compliance regulations at the end of the day are really security programs are to protect a particular critical asset, right? So compliance, PCI compliance is really around putting together a security practice or a program to protect credit card information and personal information. HIPAA is about protecting personal health information and so on and so forth. So security risk analysis is really the heart of understanding what are the vulnerable aspects of an organization? What are the risky aspects of the organization that they need to worry about? So let's talk about risk management in a bit more detail. What are we trying to do with the risk management and, and through sec security risk analysis? We are trying to identify threats. Uh, we are trying to identify the critical assets that might be affected by these threats. Uh, these threats are typically exploiting vulnerabilities. And if there are security controls in place to prevent or, or to detect or, or um, negate such attacks, that should be taken into account. And the likelihood impact of these, um, these uh, critical assets being compromised. And, and this needs to be done in a continuous fashion. 
it's not not um, sufficient to do an assessment risk assessment once a year and 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 assume that things will be okay there is a need to do continuous monitoring because threat patterns are changing by the week new vulnerabilities are being discovered by the week and uh, and there might be organizational changes new employees come old employees leave uh, some employees leave etc cetera, etc cetera. so there's a need to continuously monitor your risk status and and security is a is a journey it's not a point in time and there's a need to continuously evolve and ensure that you're monitoring any changes so this is the risk management framework that um, that you will find with any of the recommended bodies um, this is a nist model that i'm showing here and it um, puts together enough nice framework what i just mentioned where um, there are critical assets that are being affected and compromised by threat sources which are exploiting vulnerabilities to cause a huge impact um, and uh, potentially the likelihood of uh, that scenario playing out is what needs to needs to be uh, understood to understand the risk and and to prevent these attacks from happening there might be some existing controls that uh, that are either implemented or planned that might help uh, prevent or detect such attacks so when you're doing a risk assessment you're trying to understand all these variables together in in a single step and um, and trying to get a sense of what what the organization's exposure is from from a risk perspective now security controls is is a key part of uh, ensuring that um, as an organization you are putting together the right security controls in place to detect and prevent such attacks so let's spend some time on that because that's going to be a key defense mechanism and um, and organization's ability to detect uh, protect and respond is really uh, a big part of um, the security controls in place so i want to talk about sans 20 so this is a, a control framework that um, is meant to do exactly what i talked about it's meant to protect your critical assets infrastructure digital assets and it allows you to do continuous monitoring to ensure that in case you get detect in case you get breach for whatever reason <coughs> excuse me you're able to detect that and respond to it in a timely fashion so why does it work it works because firstly it's been developed uh, some background about uh, this framework it's been developed by the cyber security council which is an international body and uh, it has contributors from private public governments and and they can con continuously looking at uh, all the threat patterns as they evolve all the all the attack vectors and and they're coming up with a sort of um, very um sophisticated set of controls that um, allows a mature security framework to be implemented and um and these are very highly qualified people who have been uh, who been doing this for a while so it's a very evolved framework it has been evolving continuously over the last uh, few years and will continue to do so and if you look at what <clears throat> what this um framework is allowing you to do it's allowing you to <clears throat> implement the protect detect and respond that i talked about so protection is around resource hardening so it has a number of controls to harden your resources it has um, privilege and access management which is around protecting your access to the critical assets it has a bunch of detection <coughs> excuse me mechanism detection and mitigation mechanisms and then response and respond responsive um, reporting mechanisms to ensure that you have a combination of protect detect and respond uh, to to have a mature security framework those different stages are required and and so there are 20 controls security controls that sans 20 as the name suggests has um, has built together has proposed which every organization can can implement and benefit from it here some here are the 20 controls i won't go through this uh, go through this um, these controls in detail 
so su suffice it to say that they fall in the three one of the three buckets. Uh, they're about um, making sure that uh, you have a mature program and you can detect um, any any intrusions and also respond to any intrusions that happen. Again, the assumption here is that no single security mechanism is foolproof. There needs to be a combination of protect, detect, and respond that allows you to uh, to have a implement and implement a complete framework. And if you look at uh, all the different attack patterns, the different attack vectors, you can see them here. There are about nine different attack vectors that happens that happen in 2014, and they return, they fall in the category of point of sales intrusions, web attacks, insider misuse, um, et cetera, et cetera. And, and if you map the 20 controls that uh, SANS 20 is recommending, you can see that all these attack patterns can, can be taken care of, at least from a uh, response and, and uh, uh, sorry, detect, respond, and detect, um, detect and respond perspective so that you are able to uh, have a mature framework um, to deal with it. So it's got mechanisms to protect, it's got mechanisms to, to detect and to respond. So given that background, given the need for um, a mature security program, we've got the security controls that, that can address that. The question is why are the security programs falling short? So, so I think partly it's because there are too many um, the, confusing messages coming from the different marketplace. And I've talked to uh, some, some very uh, deep security experts, and, and um, there is a lot of confusion out there. Uh, so, you know, people talk about, what should I do? Should I do security, risk, or compliance? Does it mean that if I'm com if compliant that I'm secure? Um, so it's really about choosing the right security control framework. And um, SANS 20 is, is ideal for businesses that are looking to deal with cybersecurity. Now, there might be organizations that need to be compliant with HIPAA, FISMA, uh, GLBA. So compliance is really protecting around, protecting and putting together a security program around protecting a critical asset that the compliance regulation is trying to protect. It, not, it doesn't necessarily mean that if you're compliant with HIPAA or FISMA that you can detect or prevent cyber attacks from happening. You need to augment the, the, the compliance regulation with a security control framework to do that. Now, if you are a, a, a financial bank and you've got GLBA that, that, and those are the only critical assets that you're protecting, then you might be okay. But it really comes down to making sure that all your critical assets are indeed protected and that the compliance regulation is, is moving, moving you in that direction. Uh, if you want to be sure, choose a security control framework like SANS 20 and, and add it on top of your compliance regulation to be sure. The other challenge is that there are too many solutions that are doing pieces of the puzzle. So protect, detect, and respond. The solutions that do just protect. Just putting a firewall in your, in your business is a good start, but that doesn't help you with detection and response. You can have an intrusion detection system that helps you with detection, but not for protection and, and responding. So it's important to look at security as a complete comprehensive framework, which has elements of protect, detect, and respond. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to, to have a mature response or your risk level is going to be very high. And, and finally, the most important thing is that the people and governance related issues. If you don't have this, uh, the CEO or the top management who's not, who doesn't buy into this idea of uh, cyber security threats, then it trickles down the organization. If the, if the CEO or the president of the company doesn't, doesn't reinforce a message, the rest of the company will not follow. So governance related issues is very key to ensuring that the organization is taking steps and, and uh, all the policies, all the tools that have been bought are really put to good use. And as I said earlier, 97% of these attacks can be prevented using simple controls. So it's not rocket science to prevent most of these 
aspects. It's just a question of understanding what needs to be done and how it needs to be done. So given that background, we decided to build AGFI to solve this problem of cybersecurity, detect, protect, and respond. And it's a cloud-based subscription solution that deals with continuous assurance for cybersecurity. So what does it mean? It, it means that it gives you a complete and continuous view of your threats, vulnerabilities. Uh, it can assess, give you, um, do security scans, and give you a complete risk exposure view for your organization. It has built-in support for multiple regulations. It's got scanning. It's got risk management frameworks that I talked about. And it's one single application that does it all. It does protect, detect, and respond and the different elements that are required to have a mature framework, have a mature security process in place. So you can do assessments, you can do scanning, you can do remediation to fix the problems if you need training, and it'll help you monitor with alerts and notification. So it's, it's, it's a complete um, solution with uh, even policies and templates that, uh, that you might need to implement SANS 20 or PCI or HIPAA. So whether it's compliance or security, you have complete um, knowledge base with uh, complete guidance on how to go about implementing it. So it's, it's a complete turnkey solution that allows you to completely manage the whole process. The way this works is that um, it has elements of protect, detect, and respond that I talked about earlier, and it allows you to in, in, encompass these different components whether it's physical safeguards or technical safeguards, the building blocks available in the solution that you can implement and um, thereby have a mature security framework and process implemented in the organization. And so we have templates for policy, for all the administrative guidance. Um, we've got uh, tools that allow you to do technical safeguards and, of course, physical safeguards. <clears throat> So AGFI has complete SANS 20 controls. Um, it's integrated with the security scanning, uh, and this is one single application that does it all. It's got policies, procedures, and uh, support for compliance regulations. The way the tool works is that um, we have an automated workflow in the solution that allows you to do the assessments, fix the problems that are found, and then continuously monitor what's what's um, what's been found, and if changes happen, it will detect that and, and uh, tell you what's going wrong. So aspects of protect, detect, and respond are implemented and automated using the single application. So whether you're doing compliance assessment, security scanning, or uh, risk assessment, all of that is integrated into the workflow. And, and you have access to a real-time dashboard with reports that, that give you the current status. And the way this is different from, from the solutions that are out there is that we have one application, one subscription that allows you to do all of these things, unlike um, the solutions that are out there, which are point solutions, and the interpretation of these point solutions are left to you, the IT administrator or the chief compliance officer or the chief security officer, to make sense of. Here, the, there's a built-in expert system that... Uh, unifies and integrates the different aspects of the security framework and gives you one single action plan, one single dashboard that gives you a complete, um, uh, complete status on what's going wrong, what's working, and, and what is coming up that you need to worry about. And this is completely um, remotely deployable. If, you, if, you are, if you're an organization that deals with multiple locations, you have um, a single glass of pane view of all your locations and you can, it's a cloud solution so you can start small and then deploy as you go along. <clears throat> risk management, um, we, we have a completely automated view of implementing risk management wherein uh, we are able to automate the whole process, make it much simpler. Typically it's a, it's a multi-month project, uh, risk assessment and it's a very expensive project what we've done is we've automated the whole process using software where we are able to scan the network, detect all assets, and um, take input from uh, your compliance assessment, risk as uh, security scans, 
or any other assessments, incorporate that into the workflow and it will give you a risk score very easily. You have access to a dashboard at any point in time which tells you your security risk and, and your compliance risk if you're interested in that and, um, and then you can drill down from this view for um, getting a more detailed operational view. By the way, if you want to play around with the solution, you can go to agify.com slash community and download a free community edition that will give you a flavor of what the, what the solution does. Um, there is also a risk dashboard which allows you to get a heat map view of all the critical issues inside your company. You can, um, you can uh, do sensitivity analysis to figure out the most critical assets or the mis most critical um, threats or the most critical controls that are missing and, and thereby get, um, get an accurate picture of where you stand today. This is an example of all the document templates that we have built in. Uh, so there are agreements, standards. Uh, we have um, built in knowledge base that will guide you through the whole process through a wizard based approach. It will tell you how to fix the problems that are found and you can do what if analysis to understand what's the current status and what happens if you change certain things uh, in terms of the overall risk posture. So <clears throat> in closing, what I would say is that as you've, as you've, as you've heard before, uh, what I was saying that cyber attacks is a, is a reality and cyber, cyber breaches are going to be increasing. It's not going to decrease, at least for the near future. And they're going to get more sophisticated. And, and there's a need to have a comprehensive security program in place and that needs a comprehensive security framework to be implemented which has protect, detect and respond. And a tool like AG5 which kind of looks into this security requirements in a holistic framework is, is important. And so there's a need to implement a comprehensive security program which has a continuous monitoring capability built into it. And uh, you can do security risk analysis and the solutions out there are, are very siloed. They're looking at a piece of the puzzle rather than the complete picture. And that's the reason why we've built AG5 to make sure that we're able to provide a complete framework that will cyber, uh, that will cyber security harden your organization. With that, let me pause here and see whether there are any questions. Okay, so the question is, um, where does this protect, detect, and respond come from, from a framework perspective? So this is the result of about 20 plus years of research in information security that um, some, of, uh, some of the security researchers have been doing. And, um, you know, the initial security frameworks were not looking at all of these aspects and hence the need for point solutions that have that have evolved in the marketplace. Um, if you look at the latest uh, NIST cybersecurity framework, uh, they, they are kind of alluding to something similar. Uh, they have about five stages instead of three stages. But, um, but this is kind of a superset of that and um, it, it is comprehensive and it's, um, it's very detailed and, and will make sure that you have a mature framework uh, in place. Please type in your questions as you, as you, um, if you have any questions on, on the webinar. So there's a question about, will we get copies of the presentation? Yeah, if you, if you want a copy of the presentation, please, please drop a note to, um, to, to me or to sales at agify.com and we will, um, we will get that across to you. So there's another question about how is AG5 different than other solutions that are out there. So as I mentioned earlier, there are point solutions that are available in the marketplace that do bits and pieces of protect, detect, and respond. And for a complete and comprehensive security program to be implemented, it's important that we look at different 
all of these aspects, not one or the other, but all of the aspects of protect, detect, and respond. So the solutions that are out there are, are looking at it in a, in, a, uh, in a siloed fashion. So we provide a single platform, single framework that deals with all of these issues, and, and we have built a patent-pending technology using an expert system approach to integrate and unify these different aspects into one single pane of glass. And that's a huge change from what's out there. So one more question about um, how is it priced? How is AG5 priced? So AG5 pricing varies by the by uh, the deployment size. So depending on whether you're a small company with um, let's say 10 users and 10 assets, the pricing would be different compared to <coughs> excuse me if you're a medium to large size um, enterprise. So it's a function of the number of users, number of devices or assets that are being secured. Uh, critical assets being secured, and uh, number of locations of the of the of the company. Uh, the prices start from anywhere between starting at about uh, fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a year entry level, all the way up to thirty thousand, fifty thousand dollars per year subscription. Um, so it it it's really a function of your parameters that uh, that you're trying to protect. Okay, so I think uh, that uh, pretty much, uh, if there are any other questions, just uh, type it in. Otherwise, uh, we'll uh, conclude the session today. We, th we thank you for, for coming, and uh, please give us feedback on any other topics that you would like us to, to take up in the next uh, few weeks. We have a webinar coming up um, in, in the next week or so. You can go to agify.com and um, look at any upcoming webinars and sign up for that. With that, let me conclude and, and uh, thank you for all for coming. We appreciate your time and um, have a great day. Talk to you soon.